The story of America is a story of grapes. The Native Americans who lived here were quite familiar with the provision of grapes around here that grew up to the top of the trees and along the riverbanks. Every explorer and settler who left any records noted the abundant grapevines. From Leif Erikson, calling this place Vinland, Sir Walter Raleigh in North Carolina, John Smith in Virginia, the Spanish in Florida, and the Dutch in New York. Grapes grow wild from coast to coast, from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. But none of these grapes were Vitas vinifera. Vitas vinifera is the Eurasian wine grape from which we get Cabernet, Pinot, Sauvignon Blanc, most of the vines that you're familiar with in the liquor store. But it is not native to America, and for some reason, it does not grow here, uh, as was discovered by all the people who tried in spite of the provision of native grapes that were all about them. But some people, including Thomas Volney Munson and his German colleagues, did realize that there was potential in these grapes. They studied these grapes, they bred new varieties, and in 1909, Munson published the definitive grape nomenclature, identifying 31 species of grapes. Almost all of them are Native America, but except for the single Vitas vinifera Eurasian grape. All the rest of that diversity is here in the United States. It includes Vitas labrusca, the conquered grape that everyone knows as Manischewitz or Welch's grape juice. Unfortunately, many people think that the Concord is the sum total of American grapes and wine, but there are many, many more options. Some of them grow in the Midwest, some in Texas, some along the East Coast. Most of their growing regions overlap here in Missouri. The woodlands, the prairies, the Ozark Highlands, the Mississippi Delta, the glaciated areas, all these ecozones come together here in Missouri where they overlap that you often find the greatest diversity, which is why for grapes, freshwater fishes, and songbirds, Missouri has more diversity than any other state. It was all that diversity that Munson and his Missouri colleagues explored. They bred thousands of varieties and sold hundreds commercially. We found some of Munson's vines in a vineyard that had been ignored for 80 years. The fact that these grapes survived all this time speaks to their hardiness and their their adaptability to this region. What we're doing here is trying to find out which of these grapes grow well in our particular place, which make the good wines and which make, in fact, excellent wines. And trying to answer these questions is what we are all about.